You are now entering the Rib Zone Sports Show on Fox 5, sponsored by Pueblo Medical Imaging. Well, I hope you stayed up late last night. I hope you didn't fall asleep on the couch because you would have missed some freshman rebels balling out in Hawaii last night. Y'all, the future is bright at UNLV. Freshmen making big plays in their final game of the season. Kyle Williams, Noel Williams, Devon Walden Jr., Centennial High, what's up? Boom! One more time. In slow motion? Ah, painful. Painful, but still awesome. And how about the Chuck Wagon rolling last night, tearing it up, hula dancing and all. Someone give this guy a grass skirt. Chuck Wagon, always, always making us smile. Well, I don't think anyone would complain if the Chuck Wagon returned next season, but we'll ask Coach Arroyo more about that coming up. Well, the Rebels may have lost their final game of the season in Hawaii last night, falling to 0-6 in this crazy COVID season they just had. But what we got to see last night is the future of this team, what they're going to look like. Their freshmen really impressing all season, but especially last night. Coach Arroyo pumped up for what's to come with his program. Well, let's go out to a fanless Aloha Stadium last night. 80 degrees in Honolulu. I'd say that was just a tad warmer than last night here, right? Well, I thought I was seeing some deja vu from the Wyoming game with Shevin Cadero's 54 yard touchdown run to open up the game. For those of you who struggled with the stream last night, like I did, Hawaii's quarterbacks got some legs cutting through that Rebels defense. Second quarter, make it 14 nothing Hawaii. A handoff to Day Day Hunter, too easy. Later in the second, the freshman, Doug Brumfield, throws to his left, but somehow the ball slips out of his hand and Hawaii recovers the fumble, but it would get kind of worse. Brumfield's hand gets crushed underneath Justice Tavai, and that's 300 pounds on your wrist. Not too comfy, right? Brumfield would leave the game and not return. Later in the second, Hawaii's ball, boom, another one. Farrell Hester forcing a turnover, and Bryce Jackson comes up with the ball. So Max Gillum in the game now later hands it off to the Chuck Wagon and Chuck loses the ball. And now we got our third turnover of the quarter and I'm like, y'all, what is happening? Wild. Two minutes left in the first half, Cordero hands it off to his senior running back, Kelvin Turner, who lit it up in this game, 28 yards to the house and Hawaii's up 21 zip. Rebels answer back with a minute left in the half, Gillum slings it the freshman Kyle Williams he's got it Williams with a career high 10 catches for 144 yards in this game dude's been killing it all season but especially last night Rebels trail 21 to 7 at the half Hawaii would start the third with a massive play Cordero airs it out to Turner and he gone 71 yard run that would later set up this a handoff to Kola'ai Nashiaga. Touchdown, Hawaii now up 28 to seven. Later in the third, Gillum feeds Chuck, flex Chuck, hula Chuck, Hawaii Chuck. The Chuck wagon just warming up. And then the freshmen were ready to put on a show. Cordero with a dart. Yeah, into the hands of Noel Williams. The freshman DB with that acrobatic spin catch. Got some Cirque du Soleil action in Honolulu last night, huh? Williams' first interception with UNLV. And later in the third, check out this. UNLV with the punt. Woo! Devon Walden Jr. lights out. Nasty. 125 left in the third. Cordero fakes it, takes it in himself because he can. It's 35 14 Hawaii. But UNLV says, oh yeah, watch this. 49 yards to the house from the Chuck Wagon, of course. And that's what Rebels fans love to see. Get the Chuck Wagon going. His hula moves kill me. <laughs> UNLV heads into the fourth quarter, trailing 35 to 21. Hawaii's quarterback had some eye issues in the fourth quarter, but they got it all sorted out. They'd later kick a field goal and take a 38 to 21 lead. Less than a minute to go, UNLV fighting Gillum with time to Gio Fa'alu. Fa'alu with the hurdle. Yeah, 250 pounds hurdling. 
Is hurdling a word? I don't know. 43 seconds left in the game. Gillum off the hands of Kelvin Souders and picked off by Donovan Dalton. That would be the ball game in Hawaii. UNLV loses 38 to 21. Well, we caught up with Coach Arroyo earlier today for our final Zoom call of the season. Take a listen. Are you proud of how hard your staff worked this year, this whole year? Yeah, I think uh, I, I am. I think the sacrifices all of us made, um, not just here, I mean, everywhere in, in the athletic department, in the community, in the city, the governor, the medical staff. I mean, to get to get an aircraft carrier turn, turn like this is never easy. It's not easy to feed through this many people in, in, in a direction, but to get the operations done, to get things get, get things lined up or something we've never we've never had in a pandemic. I mean, to get the doors open to have kids come here daily is a whole different operation to getting wristbands, to getting COVID checks three times a week. It's just such a different deal. And uh, to go through what we had to go through every single day in and day out, we had to figure out whether we were going to practice together or we were going to have to service each other every morning. So to have to go through those hurdles um, together, and I think um, we'll, 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 be, uh, we'll be better for it. You know, I'm proud of the staff and what they've done and the sacrifice they've made with their and their families. Because again, that goes back to you know, none of these, none of our kids, none of our, none of our staff have had a chance to be anything normal when it comes to family time or togetherness. And I think that usually our kids are at our house once a week, having dinner with their families. And, you know, um, and I say kids, our players. You know, it's a big thing about our programs: having our players at the house and meet our families and sit down and and get them away from um, and get them a little change up, get them out of the, get them out of the uh, task oriented uh, building operation on 24/7. But we haven't had them privy to that. They haven't had a chance to see their parents at games. Um, you know, we haven't had a chance to really get our families acclimated and, and together. I mean, our families haven't got together as staff because of this stuff. So it's been a challenging, uh, it's been a challenging 11 months. But these 70 days, I think, are going to be really, really prudent uh, for us moving forward and laying the groundwork. Are you proud of the growth you saw last night from your freshman class? Yeah, for sure. I think that, uh, you know, we've seen 60 now with the season, we've seen 16 true freshmen, I think six red shirt freshmen and 11 lock-ons with significant playing time. And uh, we've asked a lot of them. I think they've been thrust in a situation that, that's, uh, that's hard. I know that because I was a true freshman and played. So it's not something I'm just doing with thin air. And, I, and I've, uh, I've played it and I've coached it, so I know it's hard. And, um, but yeah, my hat's off to them the way they've competed. I mean, it's a perfect example of guys like, you know, Ricky Johnson, he hasn't practiced in, in weeks and he came back this week late in the week. And he led us in tackles. No Williams had a turnover. I mentioned Chaz after the game with his three punts inside the 20. Um, Kyle Williams had a big, been a big game. Um, Fortunately, went out late in the game. Um, but uh, Tiger Shanks got back in. I mean, they're all over the field. Obviously, you get 16 guys playing in the one or two deep. You're, you're young everywhere. Everyone, everyone contributed. But um, you know, I think that's a that, that's a that's a growing sign. Have any seniors told you if they're planning to stay or return or? Have those conversations started yet? No, we have all those meetings this week and uh, as we move forward. So we start that tomorrow going through and I'll meet with uh, I'll meet with every player in the program. It takes some time to do that. I think that's uh, something, you know, as head coach, you got to do. Make sure you spend time with these guys and, and continue to, to uh, get them face to face in a one on one and, and have a conversation with them about uh, the expectations and what you can do for them. And um, so that'll be this week. Well, I know you're pumped up for your freshmen, your 2021 class, the future of your team. What are your goals this off season? Well, the, the goal is to, to keep, uh, to keep our, our eye on the prize and, and understand the process in, in which we set forth and the process in regards to requiring the appropriate talent to better our roster, um, to continue our player development program, which finally I think hopefully takes off and gets an off season. Um, that is a huge piece of what we do. Um, and our ability to uh, to set our mindset and training and get our and get our weight room operated the right way to put um, put these guys in a, in, in another uh, another area physical and then the chance to get through the scheme implementation um, is another goal and and full get through the full cycle of that you know an evaluation here of, of of these first 70 days put it on paper now for spring ball get a get a really good spring ball ahead of us uh, plan it out appropriately get a summer session down and then get into fall camp where guys can feel like they're playing faster. You know, and uh, and that's the key. This is just more reps and maturity. 
And coming up next on the Reb Zone, we're switching gears to Rebels hoops. You guys miss the run in Rebels? Me too. We catch up with Coach Otzelberger next to find out how the team is doing this week after a member tested positive for COVID-19 on their program. The Rebels are getting ready to jump back into action tomorrow night against Pepperdine. So the Red and Rebels went from playing four games last week to zero this week. 2020, right? Well, UNLV was supposed to host Eastern Washington on Wednesday night at the Thomas and Mac, but that game was canceled due to a member within the UNLV men's basketball program testing positive for COVID-19. So I caught up with head coach TJ Otzelberger this weekend to find out how the guys are doing and how they're getting ready to jump back into action tomorrow night when they host Pepperdine at 630. Yeah, we're doing well. You know, um, Get back to the practice court is something that's much needed. We had that stretch. Um, obviously, we didn't start the season the way we would have liked. And then I think it goes right into, you know, we played Wednesday night and right away Friday early we leave. And then you've got three more games and then a game on the way back. So it was that long stretch, eight or nine days on the road, and uh, it takes a little bit out of you. I felt like on the positive end, with each game or each time out, I think there was some improvement, things we got better at. Um, at the same time, um, you know, for us, I think having that practice time is really going to be important. We uh, didn't have, like many, the summer we would have liked and, and have a younger bunch. And we're still trying to develop some of those practice habits. And I think when you develop those the right way, you put yourself in position where you can earn the right to win games. And we had a little more urgency against Kansas State. You saw that. Something we're going to continue building on is our, our practice habits, and uh, I know we're on our way to doing that. Well, Coach Otzelberger shares more on how COVID-19 has impacted their practice this week and how he expects his team to roll with all the changes that will happen this season. Yeah, we've kind of been on and off just trying to do what's safe um, and, and, you know, with the, the health and safety protocols. Um, you know, as we've gone through the testing, so uh, we've had to pivot a little bit and then we've been, um, you know, trying to get back to our normal routine. So our guys have had to be open minded and ready for whatever comes our way. We've kind of uh, talked to them about what's next is our, you know, what we're trying to approach. We don't know what's coming at us. Uh, that's going to be part of this all year uh, with COVID, I think, for everybody. And so we just can worry about what's next. And, for us, that's getting better that next day or that next opportunity and, and trying to be adaptable to whatever, you know, whatever circumstance we may or may not be dealt. And as the one in four Rebels jump back into action tomorrow night against a three and three Pepperdine team, Coach Otzelberger is hoping his team can improve defensively moving forward and come out with more energy tomorrow night at the Thomas and Mac. Yeah, I think defensively, it comes down to guarding the basketball, keeping our chest in front without fouling. I think uh, something that's really given us a challenge is, is our inability uh, to keep the dribble in front of us. Um, a lot of times that comes down to uh, a level of focus, a level of intent. We're using words uh, like desperation, uh, urgency, pride, and those things. So it's, it's not only the man guarding the ball, it's our other defenders being in gaps and, and, and having a presentation and a mentality as well. And so if we can do that without fouling, I think that'll really help our defense to improve. And that's probably been our main focus through the course of our practices and workouts to try to really establish that. And coming up next on the Red Zone, the Lady Rebels opened up conference play this weekend against Wyoming. We catch up with head coach Lindy LaRock on how their season's going and how different it is this year to face a conference opponent back to back in the same week. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Coach LaRock shares more after the break. Well, the Lady Rebels opened up conference play this weekend against Wyoming. UNLV hosting the Cowboys back to back in their new conference schedule this year. Well, the Lady Rebels won game one at the Cox Pavilion yesterday. This game was all about sophomore Kiana Wilfred coming off the bench with a career high 18 points. Wilfred helped her team cruise past the Cowboys, winning their first conference game of the season 54 to 46. Fun fact, those 46 points 
are the fewest given up by UNLV in a Mountain West season opener. UNLV will host Wyoming for game two on Monday at 1.30. Lindsay LaRock shares what the advantage is this season to playing conference opponents back to back. You know, the advantage is being able to play more games. Um, you know, I think that was the, why the format happened, um, you know, because it's Wyoming's here. We had a safe game, so why not play another game? Um, so that is the advantage is there, you know, competitively um, it's different. You know, we have to expect that they're going to make adjustments. And so are we, you know, it could be it. it you have to expect an even tighter game and really anything can happen. Um, you know, I think they shot, they shoot the ball better than they did today. Um, I'd like to think that's part, partly our, our defense, but you know, maybe it just wasn't falling for them. So we can't expect, um, you know, expect that next game. Next game. It, it can be a whole new ball game. And as the Lady Rebels improve to two and two this season, Lindy LaRock shares how excited her players are to play more games closer together this week and start finding the rhythm. Playing kind of every other day here in the conference is pretty normal. Typically, we're used to preparing for a different team for this second game. Um, so if anything, it allows us to really uh, study this game film, um, make our adjustments and, and come back um, with another game plan for the same team. So, um, you know, it, they're excited to be playing and we're fortunate to start this first weekend here out at home um, so we can kind of feel good in, in our own home gym here. Um, but yeah, we're just we're again, we're just so grateful for the opportunity to play. Um, you know, you see across the country just things just continue to un unfold at different places. And coming up next, we wrap it up with Coach Arroyo and say goodbye to him one last time this season. But he's already working on the 2021 season as he prepares for early signing day on Wednesday. We'll talk about the future of UNLV football next. Well, I can't believe the 2020 football season is over. That was quick like six games quick. Now on to the 2021 season. Here's more from Coach Arroyo earlier today on how he's already preparing to welcome his next recruiting class to UNLV. Uh, we're, we're recruiting every position, um, every position, and, and, they, and they've got to have traits that, 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 uh, that fit what we're trying to get done philosophically. And uh, every, right now with the way we've had a roster attrition and the, and, and, and the percentage of players were down this year, from a scholarship standpoint and just the 85, not so much the 105, um, we're not even close to that, is is every position right now we need depth with. There's a lot of holes on our roster in regards to certain classes. Um, and what that means is you have a certain number of guys as a senior, junior, sophomore, and a freshman, which help you put in line things that uh, over the course of time, as guys go in and out of the program, you, you, you begin to transition effectively and uh, and not have setbacks in regards to starting anybody that's completely brand new and fresh to everything. But we're not in that situation yet. So um, definitely looking forward to uh, looking forward to continue to build our, our, our roster management, which is um, in my eyes, one of the most critical things I can do. Well, I can't wait for Wednesday. I'll be hosting UNLV's signing day live show from two to three o'clock at the Fertitta football complex as Tony Cordasco and I will be introducing UNLV's early commits on Wednesday afternoon. This 2021 class currently ranks second in the Mountain West. So we got the signing show on Wednesday. Let's take a look at what else is on tap this week for the Rebels. The Run-In Rebels will host Pepperdine tomorrow night at the Thomas & Mack for a 6.30 tip. And then on Sunday, UNLV opens up conference play on the road at Wyoming. They'll stay there for two games. The first one on Sunday. Time is TBD for right now. The Lady Rebels will wrap up their two-game series against Wyoming tomorrow at 1.30. Then they'll host Pacific on Sunday at 3.30. And hey, how about the Mountain West Championship game being played at Sam Boyd Stadium this year. Biggest blow up in 2020 Sam Boyd Stadium. The undefeated San Jose State Spartans headed to the ship for the first time in program history. San Jose State will host the five and one Boise State Broncos for a 115 kickoff at Sam Boyd Stadium. That game will air this Saturday right here on Fox 5. We'll have a great week guys. We'll see you right here next Sunday. You're watching the Rep Zone Sports Show on Fox 5, sponsored by Pueblo Medical Imaging.